This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2375, How to Stop Procrastinating, a Psychologist's Trick for Tackling, I'll Do It Later, by Dr. Allison Nebus Davis of DrAllisonAnswers.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who's been reading to you every day, including holidays, for about six and a half years. And I'm gonna keep that up. So with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. How to Stop Procrastinating, A Psychologist's Trick for Tackling, I'll Do It Later, by Dr. Allison Nebus Davis of DrAllisonAnswers.com. Procrastination might seem like a silly little habit, but if you're a chronic procrastinator, then you know how much damage and chaos can be caused by putting things off. I'll do it later. I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll get to it when I have more time. This waiting becomes a habit, and before you know it, this habit becomes a way of life. Procrastination is sneaky. It has major consequences. And I'll be honest, it's a hard habit to break. It might surprise you, but I'm actually a recovering procrastinator. For most of my life, I waited until the last minute. I felt anxious and stressed as I scrambled to get things done. I felt exhausted when it was all over. And then just days later, I'd repeat the cycle all over again. If you're a procrastinator, I know you can relate. You put things off until the last minute. You stress about how you're gonna get it all done. And then you exhaust yourself, swearing you'll never procrastinate again. It's a maddening habit. You know it's not helpful, yet you keep doing it. And you can't understand why. Several months ago, I shared the real reason you procrastinate. I explained the simple reason that you keep putting things off. The response to that video was overwhelming with so many people having an aha moment, finally understanding the reason behind their chronic procrastination. Knowing why you procrastinate is powerful, but knowing why you procrastinate and fixing your procrastination, those are two very different things. Several years ago, after a lifetime of procrastinating, I finally got fed up. I was done with my habit of putting things off, tired of the stress it caused me. When I realized that my procrastination wasn't a complicated habit, but rather a simple avoidance of anxiety and distress, it clicked. After all, I'm a psychologist, one that specializes in anxiety, and I know a lot about the anxiety avoidance cycle. It's my bread and butter and something I talk about daily with clients. Yet I'd almost missed it, hidden away in my procrastination. So I started applying what I know about anxiety to procrastination, And within weeks, things started to change. By using a series of simple questions, I went from, I'll do it later, to, I'll do it now. These questions are simple yet effective, challenging your habit of waiting. Wondering how to stop procrastinating? Well, these questions will help you tackle your to-do list and break your procrastination habit for good. Number one, am I going to, or do I have to do this thing eventually? Start by asking yourself whether you will end up doing the task you're procrastinating on at some point. Will you eventually write and turn in the paper or will you not write it and take a zero? Will you eventually go to the grocery store or will you eat out for the rest of your life? Will you eventually do laundry or will you go and buy new clean clothes to wear? This question is designed to help you identify whether or not you have to or will do this thing at some point. If the answer is yes, then move forward to question number two. Number two, will it get easier if I wait? Will the paper be easier to write in three days? Will the load of laundry be smaller in a week? Will grocery shopping take less time in another few days? It's important to note that this question can be tricky because we're not asking if it will feel easier, we're asking if it will be easier. So to be clear, this question involves objectively looking at a task and then determining whether or not it will reduce, shrink, or be easier if you put it off. Spoiler alert, less than 1% of tasks get easier if you wait. The laundry pile won't magically shrink and the words you have to write won't come easier. If the answer to this question is no, meaning that the task won't get easier, then proceed to question number three. Number three, What are the negative consequences if I continue to wait? This question prompts you to think through the potential consequences of procrastinating. This question asks you to be honest with yourself about 
how putting things off and waiting will really affect you. And here's why this question is critical. When you're about to procrastinate, the positive consequences of avoiding are tangible. They're tempting. Perhaps procrastinating would give you more time in bed, more time with friends, or another episode on Netflix. Maybe procrastinating would reduce your anxiety for a moment or help you feel less stressed for a second. These positive consequences have immediate and tangible benefits, and they register with your brain big time. Meanwhile, the negative consequences of avoiding feel far off. They're less in the moment. They're less tangible. So this question is about bringing those potential consequences to the front of your mind. It's about helping your brain compare apples to apples, making a more informed decision about whether or not you want to procrastinate. For example, if you procrastinate, the negative consequences might include more stress, more anxiety, or reduced sleep. It might mean less time to ask for help, less confidence in the product you put out, or having to do a whole day of laundry rather than just an hour. The more specific and detailed you can be about these negative consequences, the better. And number four, the final question, do I want to experience these negative consequences? Do you want to feel more stressed, frantic, and anxious? Do you want to lose sleep or risk getting a lower grade? Are you willing to experience all the negative consequences you just named? If the answer is no, then start now. Start the task immediately. No more delaying, no more waiting, and no more procrastinating. Take a step right where you are toward the task you've been avoiding. Let's pause for a second and recap what questions one to three have taught you. You've acknowledged that at some point you have to do the task. You've acknowledged that it won't get easier if you wait, and you've outlined several negative consequences of waiting. So this thing you're procrastinating on, it's not going to get any easier than it is right this second. So start now. At this point, you might be thinking, but Dr. Allison, I still don't want to do the task I've been procrastinating on. Doesn't sound any more appealing and I'm not any more motivated. Well, of course it doesn't. The thing you've been avoiding involves discomfort. We're not going to trick your brain into thinking it's a spa day. One of the major things that fuels procrastination is the unconscious belief that the task you're avoiding will get easier if you wait, that it'll be easier to do later. This belief tricks you into waiting, procrastinating, and then waiting some more. This series of questions is designed to challenge your unconscious belief that it will get easier if you wait, because that's a huge part of what procrastination is. It's a skewed and inaccurate belief that it'll get easier later. So much of my job as a psychologist is helping people challenge their unconscious beliefs. Because as I tell my clients and myself often, your thoughts are not the truth. Just because you think it doesn't make it true. If you wanna know how to stop procrastinating, you've got to be honest about the little lies your brain is telling you. You've gotta be vigilant about teasing apart the untruths about waiting till later. Because it won't get easier. The discomfort won't go away and you won't magically feel like doing it tomorrow. These four questions will give you a concrete, surefire way to stop waiting and do things now. Enough avoiding, enough anxiety, and enough stress. Enough telling yourself you'll do it later than saying that again a week later. Take control of your procrastination, show it who's boss, and use these four questions to regain control. You just listened to the post titled How to Stop Procrastinating, A Psychologist's Trick for Tackling I'll Do It Later by Dr. Allison Nebus Davis of DrAllisonAnswers.com. I think it Dr. Allison. I thought these were great questions to consider if you really struggle with procrastination because it makes you think about the consequences of procrastination or in some cases, something's on your to-do list and then by asking yourself these questions, you could realize that doesn't need to be on your to-do list at all, and it's causing stress for pretty much no reason since it's always sitting there on your list or in the back of your mind taking up space. But like she said, if it really will need to get done eventually, thinking about the consequences and repercussions of procrastinating can definitely help. But getting started is usually the hardest part for us, so definitely try to take that baby step today to get started. That's often all it needs. 
And with that, have a great start to your weekend and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.